welcome back for another whiskey review. Today looking at this limited edition whiskey from Kilhoman Lock Gorham 2018 edition. Now um, the whiskey has been out for quite a long time and um, I remember getting quite excited about it uh, when it came to New Zealand market because it came to New Zealand a few weeks or months after my first and only visit to Scotland and I've been to the Kilhoman distillery and um, I got very excited because Kilhoman was a chance discovery and I just wanted to share some of the pictures from this particular visit to Scotland and in particular to Kilhoman. Now I um, visited Kilhoman in March 2018. It was actually the first distillery I visited on the Isle of Isla. And it was a chance visit. I had genuinely no idea what Kilohoman Distillery is or who they are. And I kind of stumbled upon them. And it was just an amazing visit to this distillery that I had a lot of heart and soul. You know, it, it's uh, run by a family. And all of the people that worked there were just brilliant. Showing me all of their equipment, their warehouses and everything that they do to make great, amazing whiskey. Obviously, um, if you like your Isla whiskeys, you would by now would have heard of Kilhoman. Obviously, in 2018, I had not heard of them. I had not tried any of the whiskeys. And I kind of pardoned myself because um, they are, or they were the newest distillery from the Isle of Isla, which had been set up in 2005. And I hadn't tried any of the drams before the trip. Which was just probably rewarding in such a unique way, stumbling upon the distillery, doing the tour, and trying their core range whiskies at the distillery and meeting the amazing people there. But also trying some of the single car stuff, which was quite young, obviously, but really, really good. Really, really rapidly um, educated myself on all things Kilahoma and started looking for all of the stuff when I came back to New Zealand. And as I said, the Lock Gorham 2018 edition came out and I must, well, I, I wanted a bottle and luckily I got it because a very small quantity came to New Zealand. Now they've been doing the Lock Gorham releases since 2012, which is once a year release of just a limited number of bottles. And in this case, there was only 15,000 bottles released. And for this one in particular, they used Sherry Cast H whiskies from three different years um only for memory 19 barrels or thereabouts were used for this release for resulting in the 15,000 bottles being released and bottled at 46 percent abv now the distillery as we know is quite young but at the time their oldest sherry age whiskey was used to put this particular release out it is non-age stated stuff because the barrels were from different ages. There were 2000, I've just got notes here, 2007, 8 and 2011. So almost at, or just over a 10 year old, I guess if it was a 2007 to 2018 edition, cask a 2011 being the youngest cask. So they mattered all together and presented this particular whiskey for us. As you can see, um, over the last two years, I've given it a lot of love and it's come down quite rapidly and only just now thought of reviewing it. And I have been sampling it before this uh, recording this review as well. And I left a bit of it in the glass just to let it breathe, just to see what happens if it's been sitting in the glass for a good 15, 20, 30 minutes. Because um, whiskey does open up if you leave it in the glass for a little while before you get into it. Well, let's see what's it like on the nose first now one thing i really enjoy it's um sherry whiskies so sherry cast age whiskies which are painted um because i believe that's just a marriage made in heaven and um it just brings out this amazing harmony or marriage of spices smoke paint and if the whiskey has been aged perfectly it brings immense sweetness at the end so you're met up front with spice and peat and smoke but then as the whiskey sort of settles on the palate it rewards you with amazing sweetness well let's see what's it like on the nose first as i say bottled at 46 percent now 
all of the Kilhomans whiskies I've had have never been too overpowering in terms of smoke and whiskey. They've been on, I wouldn't say on the gentle side, but somewhere in the middle. If you thought Lafroy is very annoying for you, I would say it's maybe as par at as at par with the Lafroy in terms of smoke and paint, but it def definitely doesn't have that medicinal character which can be a bit off-putting with Lafroy or even Ardbeg drams. Where this one, Kalahoman in particular, somehow achieve this very good, clean, smoky character with none of the medicinal characters if you don't enjoy them. There's just gentle smoke straight away with a little bit of spice. Um, just the slightest hints of some fruits. Maybe just a hint of orange peel. Is that a character I'm seeing? But the smoke is just the perfect amount. It's not annoying, but it's there. Um, it's very pleasing. And being at 46%, I really admire that. You know, all of the whiskies are non chill filtered, no artificial color, and always presented at 46% ABV or higher. Really, really good nose. And I would think because I've left the glass alone for good nearly 30 minutes, um, there's definitely a lot less of the smoky character and just a little bit more of the sweeter fruit coming on the nose compared to when it's sort of been poured straight out of the bottle and if you brought it to your nose. But still a good amount of smoke there, just going back and forth with the... Beautiful sweet characters. I wouldn't say they are overly sweet, but it's there. You notice them and it's just pleasant Well, let's see what's it like on the mm. Mm. Spice straight away followed by smoke and decent amount of it and when I say Kilhoman somehow achieves good, clean, smoky character, I do mean it. It's really, really nice. In terms of, be kind of likened to having a full-bodied Maduro cigar. You know, the the smoke is up front and it's there, but it's not annoying in any way. It sort of intrigues you. The spice is kind of dying down now, looking for just a little bit more of the sweet character. I might just revisit it to see if I can find a bit of bit more of the sweetness. Mm. There it is. Just the back of the palate. This sort of not rich sweetness again. This is not a space out dram. You're not gonna find um, a bouquet of tropical fruits and honey and vanilla. There is sweetness, very gentle, but very much a good amount of maritime sort of, I don't want to say salty, but you feel that, but just a hint of the salty character there, smoke and spice, just great marriage of the three together. Really, really good. Very satisfying dram. And um, the sherry influence, you know, I mean, you would be looking Typically, in a sherry cast aged whiskey for more of the raisins, um, I'm not getting that kind of raisiny sweetness, which sometimes can be quite rewarding, but sometimes you just want a nice, clean, smoky, and spicy whiskey, which is what this delivers on, definitely. Mm. And probably medium to long finish, because my palate is just absolutely full of great smoky characters really really good and it's just very very rewarding i mean it'd be a kind of a whiskey you would have long after dinner you know just to settle down have um a drama too um or your favorite movie or if you're having a stogie that would be just epic uh for the purposes of this video i can't marry the two passions together but it's good and it reminds me and i said it before of a good full-bodied maduro cigar just 
the richness, the spiciness, but then there has a rather satisfying dry character, which is really, really good. Really, really enjoyed it. I'm not going to cut it with water because I have done it in the past when I've enjoyed this bottle. And um, I didn't find it improving significantly with the water because I kind of thought I'll cut it with the water and get a little bit more of the sweetness, hopefully, but didn't really find it. So I'm not going to do it for the purpose of the review as well. But really, really enjoying it. And I'm rather sad it's traveling south <laughs> quite quickly. I'm probably down to the last 200 or 250 mils which is all right. Um, I unfortunately missed out on, I had my eyes on the 2020 edition of Loch Gorham and missed out on it, but that's okay. I'm sure there will be many more limited edition whiskeys from Kilhoman to look forward to in the future. Well, that's it for today. If you're liking the content, please like, share and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the very near future with another whiskey review. See you later. Bye-bye.